Okay, this is just a very simple update on my last video about how I put together this uh, ultrasonic uh, record cleaning machine. Using the Isonic tank, all the information's in the last video. I guess I can link the last video underneath this one, so in case you didn't see it. Uh, just a couple of things. One is I now have six records uh, instead of seven, so there's a little more spacing. Probably about a min an inch and a half in between. <clears throat> so the you know the waves, the ultrasonic waves do a better job. And also I changed this uh, last time. I just had some kind of cheesy, oh uh, like a metal something that that was resting on. So I built a little simple. As you can see, the uh, real thin, uh, maybe one foot by one foot board is nailed to that one, and that slides underneath and keeps it stable. And then that, and then it has the eyelet on the top, and you can just screw that down to adjust the height. <clears throat> now one thing about this tank, the Isonic tank, it's great for many reasons that I mentioned in the last video, but one thing is it's extremely shallow. Uh, these guys like just barely made it. I think the record width from the average dead wax run out to the edge of the record is about four inches, right? And this tank is like 4.1 inches deep uh, from the maximum fill line. And you notice that those uh, heating elements actually are raised because they're really strong. They're great stuff, like I mentioned in the last video. And, and not just the uh, the heating, that's the little square ones, but the round ultrasonics are very powerful. But they're raised up about an eighth of an inch. So it gives you like almost no space without the records hitting the bottom and still being able to fill it, you know, to the appropriate place there. Um, as you can see, that's turning very slowly at about 0.5 RPM. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, you have to fill it just a little bit above the fill line in order to get it to cover to the dead wax and not have it hit the bottom of the tank. So that's something I wanted to mention. You may have to go like an eighth of an inch over the fill line and I think if you're careful it's probably okay. So what I have added also is this nice rinse tank here and it's just a, a I don't know a dish pan for a kitchen I guess and I was fortunate because it, it does it fits just right and that has distilled water in it and uh, so I found that because the chemistry that I use that's so strong in this, as I mentioned in my last video, uh, it really does need a rinse before I set it out to dry over here. So that way I don't have to go and vacuum each record with my vacuum record cleaning machine, which I also made, and, you know, do a rinse every single time. I can just, you know, run it through this, then run it through that for about a minute is all it takes to just wet it. Uh, because I plug it into a little faster, the 12 volt there, and so it turns this little motor at about 2 RPM. So then it just takes like literally a minute to just spin around and rinse off. Then I leave it over here to dry. So for 15 minutes. And then I put the fan on it for 5 just to take off the last little bit of water. Okay. So I'm going to try to pause this. I did this already once and it didn't work. Uh, if I don't, I'll just have to do a series of videos. And I'm sorry because I don't know how to do it. I'm not a video guy. I'm just trying desperately not to look too stupid, which takes all my energy. Okay, so I'm going to try to pause this and then move this over to the rinse tank to show you. Hold on. Okay, I believe I did that right with the pause. Now, we have it over in the rinse tank, and you'll notice that the speed with my little marker there is going quite a bit faster, about four times faster. So it really only takes to go like a revolution or so and just rinse everything off. Uh, I mean, it really only takes like, what, not even a minute? So let me get around here so you can see. Basically, the same structure as the other... Uh, tank there you see that and then the same kind of eyelet thing here I just have it taped on there because uh, because I'm just that kind of guy I'm a duct tape kind of guy so anyway so there you go and so I mean it really only takes a minute it's already gone like way long enough so then I'm gonna pause it and uh, so basically yeah that's it there and with the 12 volt like I say it really spins around fast and you can rinse it it takes a minute and then you can set it down here to dry. Now I'm going to try to pause this again. Let's see. Okay, hopefully these pauses are working. So then I just shake off the water in there. And then I kind of roll it, you know, because I figure the water's gathered on the bottom, what, fourth or so. So I kind of roll it back and forth a little bit to get the excess off. And then I kind of very lightly bounce it on there just to get most of the water. And I leave it on here for about 15 minutes to air dry. And I have the door open there so that... Okay, now I'm going to pause it again and show you a little bit more with some of the more aggressive uh, 
vacuum cleaning, I came up with a couple of other different things. So let me throw that on here. Hold on. Oh, I just wanted to add too that after sitting for 15 minutes and air drying, then I go ahead and put this fan here. It's just a regular old fan. I know real anal record cleaning guys are going to like be horrified and go, oh, it's not filtered and you're going to get dust all over it. But you know, the point is, after 15 minutes, I've noticed when they sit, they're almost completely dry. The only thing that's left is like a little tiny bit of water gathers maybe at the very bottom or just a tiny bit around the dead wax. So when I put the fan here, I just run it for five more minutes and it just blows that little bit off and then we're done. And they're always completely dry and there's no debris on there. And then I always, you know, play check them when I'm done and they, they always sound great. So just wanted to add that. Now I'm going to go show you the other thing. Okay, so this is one thing I added. It uh, is basically just one of those really horrible little all-in-one record players. Um, I got a Victrola just because it looks kind of neat and it's got like a suede top. But I got the least expensive one, you know, it's like $40 or something. And um, so basically, I just use this so that if I need to vacuum clean, which is with this, I guess I should show you this too, sorry. I did before in my other one, but I want to show you a little better look. So this I made too is my vacuum record cleaning machine. This I've had a lot longer, as you can see. See the deal there? You get the idea, the vacuum, okay? There you are. Okay, so before I do it on this though, I thought, hey, wouldn't it be neat to the records that need a little more aggressive cleaning after the ultrasonic, if I run them on here and put the fluid on and then use, as you can see, I've got my, my various fluids there. They're all different kinds. Uh, but then I get this, I got this little brush and this is new. This is a, a makeup brush. So no rude comments now, I don't use it for makeup. And if I did, it would be nobody's business. So I got this, mainly because it's really dense. And uh, fibers are super dense, super soft. So I put the record on, put the fluid on, and then this gives it just a little bit of agitation, see? Like this. And then, when I'm done with this, of course I put the record immediately over here, see? On here. And... Uh, add a little more fluid perhaps, and then 